Over the last five years, I've built multiple seven-figure businesses. In the last 12 months, a big focus of mine has been building more time freedom for myself so I'm not as handcuffed to my businesses. I've been able to successfully do this through strategic hiring. By hiring, I've been able to take my focus off the day-to-day -day operations of my businesses and focus on growing my businesses exponentially. In this video, I'm gonna show you the five key hires you need to make to grow your business just like I have. I'm currently in Florida with my family to get away from the Midwest winter for the next five weeks. I'm able to do this through my strategic hiring in my businesses. Now, I wanna give credit where credit is due. I've taken a lot of these strategies from Dan Martell's book, Buy Back Your Time. In this book, he talks about the keys to growing your businesses by buying back your time and not wasting time, energy, and effort on low-level tasks that are not producing high income. So in this video, I'm gonna give you five actionable steps on how you can be more productive with your time, how you can gain back some time freedom like I have in my businesses. So the first thing that I did was did a time audit of my time. And again, I wanna give credit to Dan Martell and his book, Buy Back Your Time. So doing a time audit, you write down every 15 minutes what you did for those 15 minutes. So if it literally is brushing your teeth and making yourself coffee, write brushing your teeth and making yourself coffee. And this should be something that should be done for multiple weeks. And one of the keys when you're doing this is do not try to do anything differently in the moment. After two weeks, what you'll do is review it, see where you could improve. So what it's going to look like is this, guys. So here you have an example of a time audit sheet. And this is what I did for literally two weeks. Every 15 minutes, I wrote down what I was doing. And then what you do after the two weeks, or maybe every night even, you're going to highlight each one of those tasks you did. And you're gonna highlight it green or red. Green is for that task gives you energy. It might be playing with your kids. That's not gonna make you money, but it gives you energy. And then red is gonna be it takes energy. For me, replying to emails is energy taking. Uh, tax stuff is energy taking. So that's what mine looked like after two weeks. You have a bunch of green and red. And then under each task as well, you're gonna associate with how much money that task can make you, how valuable that task is to making more money. And you're gonna do that with one through four dollar signs. One is a very minimal task. It might be replying to an email. It might be getting coffee, something like that. While four is the highest thing. You're doing sales with a client. You're building your team. You're growing your team. So here's an example if I scroll down of what it's gonna look like. So at the beginning of the day, drive to the office, make coffee, check emails, all this stuff. And you can see the green is for giving energy. Like making coffee isn't a tedious thing. It's not taking energy from a lot of people. Maybe it is for you and you could theoretically outsource that. And then the value sign, making coffee, driving to the office, checking emails. These are not high value tasks. And then your higher value tasks are sales calls, uh, quarterly budget review. You can see this is a high value task to the company, but it is taking energy. So this is literally what you should do for two weeks and then sit down and review like, okay, I see there's a lot of things pulling energy from me. I can outsource this, I can outsource this. This is giving me energy, but it's low value. So I could outsource that theoretically. So that is how you need to do it for two weeks. The key to doing this effectively is not changing your day to day for those two weeks. Do not try to outsource things right off the bat. Do not try to change your day to day, but do this and this will help drastically. So we did number one and number two. Number one is doing the time audit. Number two is evaluating the time audit. And this third one from Dan Martell is the drip quadrant. And basically this is similar on it, but you're gonna put things in different categories based on how much energy they are taking from you and how much money they are making you. So let's take a look at what the drip quadrant looks like. So here you have the drip quadrant and you can see these four different boxes. At the bottom left, you can see delegation. This is low energy, it does not light you up and does not make you much money. This is things that need to be delegated immediately. And then you have things up at the top that take energy from you. They're not giving you a ton of energy, but they're making you money. And the investment side that is giving you energy, maybe it's recording a podcast on someone else's podcast. It might give you a long-term ROI money, but it's not giving that immediate ROI uh, for money, but it is giving you energy. For me, one of my big things in the investment quadrant is doing social media, is doing podcasts, going on people's podcasts, uh, just spreading the word about land investing, about entrepreneurship, everything like that. That gives me a ton of energy. It is not a direct immediate ROI, but over long term, that can make you a lot of money. 
And finally, you have production up here. It lights you up, it makes you money. For me, it is talking to potential students, talking to current students, helping students out with land flipping deals, helping them better their lives is something that I can always relate with in terms of that giving me a ton of energy and is a huge ROI for me. If I have a land student that is making $50,000 a month and they need me to invest in some deals, that is gonna help me from a financial perspective and it also gives me a ton of energy giving them that as well and helping them out with their deals. So that there is the drip quadrant. Number four is calculating your buyback rate. So I'm talking a lot about outsourcing things, about things that take away energy from you, things that aren't giving you a good ROI, but how do you pay for these things? How do you afford an employee? How much can you pay an em uh, employee? And the thing about it is you can get three, four, five dollar employees overseas to do a ton of this stuff. This low energy stuff, this stuff that is taking energy from you and is not giving you a good ROI need to be outsourced as fast as possible. So what you're gonna do with your buyback rate, essentially, I, I just like doing it this bottom way. So what can you pay someone per hour? So it is your yearly income, which let's say it's $500,000, you divide it by 2,000 and then you divide it by four. This is what you could theoretically pay someone or you can, a combination. So the way I look at it is, if your buyback rate is 6250, you might be able to pay four overseas employees to take away all those low value tasks. You can probably do more than that. If your income is $100,000, your buyback rate is $1,250 an hour, and that is per hour. So with $1,250 an hour, even if it's down here, you could hire people to take all those low value tasks that aren't bringing you money. Maybe those high level tasks, uh, sales calls, stuff like that, even if they are taking energy from you, you will not be able to outsource those immediately. But this is what you need to do. You need to determine your buyback rate. And what I see a lot of entrepreneurs doing, a lot of people in our business doing, are they're just trying to hoard money. They're hoarding money, hoarding money, and they're not putting it into growing their business. And the reality of buying back your time is you need to actually hire someone to do some of those lower value tasks. If I can hire someone to do my emails, to uh, just do some paperwork stuff, to take off a few hours a week for me so I can do more sales calls, so I can evaluate more land deals, so I can talk to brokers to land more deals, that is a huge ROI for me. Even if I'm paying an employee 30, 40, $50,000 a year to do those emails, to do those lower level tasks. Okay, so we went over number one, time audit. Number two, looking through your time out audit and evaluating your time audit. Number three is that drip quadrant. So the quadrant of four, what's taking energy from you, what's giving you energy, what's making you money, and what's not making you money. Looking at that, really evaluating it. Number four is determining your buyback rate. Like, okay, now I know what's taking energy from me. I know what's making me money. We put all these into different categories. Now how much can I pay to outsource someone? or whatever that situation is. So this fifth one is key in terms of the order you need to hire. Number one on the order you need to hire is admin. And that's for emails. That's for the $1 sign task that you have on your time audit. That's admins. It can be overseas for three, $4 an hour. Like it really does not have to be anything crazy with that. Number two is delivery. So you have a product. How do you deliver that product to your customers? That can be through, it can be an e-commerce product, it can be a course product. How do you deliver? Delivery is very, very key. They are not creating your product, they are just after purchase delivering the product. Again, this can be an overseas employee for three, four, five dollars an hour. From there, you're gonna get into three higher level tasks. So we had admin, we have delivery. Number three is marketing. How do you get leads is what I view marketing as. So am I, Am I setting up Facebook ads? Am I doing organic content? How am I marketing to my potential customers so they can reach out, they can uh, go into my funnel? And then that leads right into four, which is sales. So you have leads, now you have consultations with these leads, you have calls with these leads. How do you actually get these leads to turn into customers? That is number four, sales. And finally, number five is leadership. Who's running this whole ship? This is going to be the last thing you hire, and this is what is going to give you the ultimate time freedom in the long run, but you do not want to rush this step. You really don't want to rush any of these steps, but that is 
when you can go on vacation. Right now, like I said, I'm in Florida for five weeks. I can do this. I can do minimal work while I'm here if I want. I love working on my businesses. I'm putting time into things that give me energy and that give me the best ROI. So really think about this. Let me break this down one more time. First thing you should hire is admin. Second is delivery. So when customers reach out, how are you delivering the product to them? Third is marketing. Fourth is sales. And then finally, number five is leadership. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you guys thought about this video in the comments below. If you like videos like this, please let me know. We'll get more to you like this. This should be very actionable. You can start today doing a time audit. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. We'll see you next time.